My name is Georg Götz, and today I want to present to you the MOTUS dataset. It's a dataset of higher order ambisonic room impulse responses, and it also features 3D models. And the measurements took place in a single room, but the furniture was varied. Um, in the presentation, I want to focus on two things. First of all, I want to introduce to you the MOTUS dataset and uh, tell you about how it was collected and what it uh, consists of. And afterwards, I want to uh, demonstrate you one use case of the data set. So first of all, the data set description. Uh, the MOTUS data set used um, an eigenmic to record room impulse responses in a single room. And the dimensions of the room were uh, 4.9 meters times 4.4 meters times 2.9 meters. So that was approximately 60 cubic meters. And in the room, we varied the furniture. Um, we have 830 unique room configurations. And when I speak about a room configuration from now on, I always mean the unique combination of furniture quantity, uh, the position and the orientation of the furniture. And every of the room configurations was measured with four different source positions and one receiver. Uh, that means in total, we have 3,320 measurements. Uh, as the measurements were done with the Eigen mic, we have 32 microphones and room impulse responses at all of those 32 capsules. And alternatively, we also included uh, the fourth order ambisonic encoding into the data set. And for every room configuration, we uh, modeled the room as a 3D model. And uh, it's uh, basically a triangulated mesh, including uh, also the absorption coefficients. Uh, additionally, we also have uh, 300 degree photographs of every room configuration. And the whole data set is then available on Zenodo. It's packaged into smaller parts. For example, it's possible to only download the room impulse responses um, or only the 3D models. And there's also a smaller kind of best of uh, version of the data set, which can be used if you want to just quickly test your ideas or something like that. Um, to show you what the data set includes, uh, I want to show you this short video. It's basically a flipbook animation of all the recorded 360 degree photographs. And you can see here in the video, uh, there are the four loudspeakers that I was talking about before. And uh, what you cannot really see here is the microphone array because it was located here below the camera. And you can see in the video, there's different kinds of furniture objects. For example, these bookshelves here. Then there are these absorption wedges uh, that you would have, for example, in an anechoic chamber. Here on the floor, there's some uh, carpet tiles and there's also these rollable um, containers, which you, for example, would have next to your uh, desk. And as you can see, the furniture objects, they were posi positioned very freely in space. So they could be either uh, at the walls, as you can see now, or they could also be in the middle of the room. Um, so basically, they were just uh, uh, moved on the horizontal plane and also rotated there. So there were not really anything uh, hanging from the ceiling, for example. Um, and the measurements, they feature different amounts of furniture, as I said before, which can be seen here on the left-hand side. So when we just look at the uh, absorption area uh, in the room, uh, we have quite uh, some differences here between all the measured configurations. And the available quantities of the furniture was that we have uh, six bookshelves in total, four drawers in total, uh, 50 absorption wedges, which we always um, varied in increments of 10. And then uh, there were 56 carpet tiles. The data set also is quite interesting because it features quite complex geometries. So when you have all the surfaces in the middle of the room, they are either reflective or absorptive. And um, there's quite some different geometries in there. And there's also some acoustic wave phenomena in there like scattering, obviously because of the furniture, but also like here in the lower image, you can see that one of the loudspeakers is actually occluded by this uh, furniture construction here. 
So that gives some nice uh, additional like use cases. And what we see also is that the acoustic conditions that we recorded in the data set is uh, quite variable. So we have reparation times at one kilohertz between 0 0.5 seconds and two seconds at most. Um, but this is also something I want to uh, elaborate now more in detail. Uh, with the use case I want to show to you, which is some reverberation time analysis. Um, because as I said before, we have a wide range of reverberation time values. And the reverberation times here uh, for this study were calculated only on the omni-channel uh, of, uh, of the ambisonic signal. And we used the toolbox developed by Karya Leinen et al. So basically this is fitting a model with a single slope and a noise term to the responses. And when we talk about the absorption areas, we always calculate them by summing all the absorption areas of all furniture objects in the room and all, of all the walls, of course. And we do not consider there any occlusion. That means, for example, when a shelf is standing in front of a wall, then all of the surfaces are included in the calculation and we don't uh, kick anything out because of the occlusion. And uh, now on the left hand side here, you can see some plot which shows the absorption area versus the reverberation time. And the general trend that we see here is kind of what we expect. So the reverberation time decreases um, with increasing absorption area. Um, but what is maybe interesting to note here is that uh, there is kind of a clustering into six distinct groups here, especially at the higher frequencies. And that is, as I said before, due to the highly absorptive wedges that we have, and because they were only varied in steps of 10 from 0 to 50. So that makes six groups. And what is also interesting to see is that at some point, the reverberation time uh, does not decrease anymore, even though the uh, absolute absorption area is still increasing. And that has two reasons. First of all, um, most of all, like most of the absorption comes from the fact that we included more wedges, but the wedges have quite a low surface area compared to, for example, the walls. So even though the absolute amount of the absorptive material in the room increases, there are still quite many surfaces of the room which are not treated uh, and therefore reflective. So um, this is one reason. And the second reason is that also uh, some of the or yeah, some of the configurations have actually non-uniform absorption distributions. That means, for example, if we have all wedges in one corner of the room, then of course, all the other corners of the room are still highly reflective and still have quite a high reverberation time then. Um, and then what you maybe cannot see so good in the presentation now, but which you could see when you zoom in on the on the figure in the paper is that here in the low frequencies, there's actually some outliers. And uh, we investigated this a little further. This is actually due to some double slope decays, which we can find here in the uh, data set. Um, uh, because of course there, when you only fit a single slope, um, then you get some false reverberation time uh, estimates. Um, and then uh, they are also called by some non-uniform absorption distributions, those outliers. And <clears throat> we did one more thing in this study and because some of the furniture combinations were measured with up to 100 different furniture distributions. Um, now I'm talking about furniture combinations as opposed to the room configuration. So, for example, what I mean is now the furniture combination C1 has a certain amount of furniture, which is 56 carpet tiles and 50 absorption wedges. And we have measured this uh, configuration of this amount quite often. Um, and now we kind of looked at how does the reverberation time vary uh, in these different furniture configurations. And we have the violin plots here, which show the distribution. And um, we definitely see that the furniture placement affects the reverberation time. Um, for example, we can see that although the absorption area stays exactly the same, the reverberation time varies quite considerably. So for example, here we have um, some high reverberation time outliers, 
which uh, we investigated further and they are due to very non-uniform distributions of the absorptive material. Uh, that means like there were some configurations where we had all the uh, all the wedges in one corner and then of course uh, the other corners are untreated which means that the reverberation time is higher than if you have the wedges very uniformly distributed around the room and then there's also uh, for example these hourglass uh, shape distributions which is quite interesting because um, the lower reverberation times that you can see here they were obtained when you had the absorption wedges on top of the containers and the higher ones were obtained when you had the absorption wedges uh, on the floor. So to summarize everything and to give also a short outlook, what can be done with the data set. Uh, we presented the MODUS data set, so a data set of fourth order ambisonic room impulse responses and they were measured in a single room with uh, varying furniture. In total, we have 830 room configurations. And we also included the 3D models and 360 degree photographs into the data set. Some potential use cases um, include the one that we have demonstrated here in the presentation and also in the paper, that is some reverberation time analysis. But this was, of course, very uh, short still. Uh, it could still be extended, for example, to use the directional information captured by the ambisonic recordings. Uh, but the data could, for example, also be used to develop or evaluate uh, some reverberation time estimation algorithms, or also to investigate the effect of the absorber placement a little more in detail. Uh, it could also be used to uh, investigate and develop virtual acoustic rendering algorithms or, for example, uh, room acoustic simulation algorithms. And the quantity of the data is, of course, also beneficial if you have some data heavy approaches, uh, for example, using machine learning. And here I want to mention one study uh, that we conducted ourselves, uh, which is using this data set. And in this study, we investigated a way how to represent the room geometry in um, very small feature vectors for machine learning. And we used it then uh, as a use case to um, estimate the reverberation time. But that was it. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask.